Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Spellbinder doing a report on a article that came out in the SalemNews.com oh, February 4th, 2011. This is a little over a year ago. And it's about magnetic pole shifts causing massive global superstorms. So don't let these people, these global warmest people that want to make a buck off of your breathing to put money from your pocket into their pocket and convince you anything. This area explains it and this is all backed up by science. So more so than, you know, this is NOAA, NASA, never a straight answer actually giving an answer here. Uh, by Terrence Aaron of Salem News says superstorms can also cause certain societies, cultures, or whole countries to collapse. Others may go to war with each other. Chicago. NASA has been warning about it. Scientific papers have been written about it. Geologists have been seen its traces in rock strata and ice core samples. Now it is here, an unstoppable magnetic pole shift that has sped up and is causing life-threatening havoc with the world's weather. Forget about global warming, man-made or natural. What drives planetary weather patterns is the climate. And what drives the climate is the sun's magnetosphere and its electromagnetic interaction with a planet's own magnetic field. When the field shifts, when it fluctuates, when it goes into flux and begins to become unstable, anything can happen. And what normally happens is that all hell breaks loose. The magnetic polar shifts have occurred many times in Earth's history. It's happening again now to every planet in the solar system, including Earth. The magnetic field drives weather to a significant degree, and when that field starts migrating, superstorms start erupting. So you wonder about these big storms happening all over the world. Tornadoes being sighted in Italy and, and England, and well, here we are. The superstorms have arrived. The first evidence we have that the dangerous superstorm cycle has started, this is a year ago, is the devastating series of storms that pounded the UK during the late 2010. On the hills of the lashing of the British Isles sustained, monster storms began to lash North America. The latest superstorm, as of this writing, is a monster over the US that stretched across 2,000 miles affecting more than 150 million people. Yet even as that storm wrecked havoc across the western, southern, midwestern, and northeastern states, another superstorm broke out in the Pacific and closed in on Australia. The southern continent had already dealt with the disasters of historic superstorm flooding from rains that dropped as much as several feet in a matter of hours. Tens of thousands of homes were damaged or destroyed after the deluge and tiger sharks were spotted swimming between houses in what was once a quiet suburban neighborhood. Shocked authorities now numbly concede that much of the water may never dissipate and have wearily resigned themselves to the possibility that that region will now contain a new inland sea because it's lower than sea level, or at least it dips down enough to hold the water in there, like a giant sea, lake, whatever. But when, but then, only a handful of weeks later, another superstorm, the mega-monster cyclone Yase, struck northeastern Australia. The damage it left in its wake is being called by rescue workers a war zone. The incredible superstorm packed winds near 190 miles per hour, Although labeled as a Category 5 cyclone, it was theoretically a Category 6. The reason for that is, storms with winds of 155 miles an hour are considered Category 5, yet Yasi was almost 22% stronger than that. Alright, a cat's cradle. Yet Yasi 
may only be a foretaste of future superstorms. Some climate researchers monitoring the rapidly shifting magnetic fields are predicting superstorms in the future with winds as high as 300 to 400 miles per hour. Such storms would totally destroy anything they came in contact with on land. The possibility more storms like Yazi or worse will wreak havoc on our civilization and resources is found in the complicated electromagnetic relation between the Sun and the Earth. The synergenic tug of war has been compared by some to an intricately constructed cat's cradle, and it is in a constant state of flux. The sun's dynamic, ever-changing electric magnetosphere interfaces with the Earth's own magnetic field, affecting to a degree Earth's rotation, processional wobble, dynamics of the planet's core, its ocean currents, and above all else, the weather. Cracks in the Earth's shield. The Earth's northern magnetic pole was moving towards Russia at a rate of about 5 miles annually. That progression to the east had been happening for decades. Suddenly, in the past decade, the rate sped up. Now the magnetic pole was shifting east at a rate of 40 miles annually, an increase of 800%, and it continues to accelerate. Recently, as the magnetic field fluctuates, NASA has discovered cracks in it. This is worrisome, as it significantly affects the ionosphere, the troposphere, wind patterns, atmospheric moisture. All three things have an effect on the weather. Worse, what shields the planet from cancer-causing radiation is magnetic field. It acts as a shield, deflecting harmful ultraviolet X-ray and other life-threatening radiation from bathing the surface of the Earth. With the field weakening and cracks emerging, the death rate from cancer could skyrocket, and mutations of DNA can become rampant. Another federal agency, NOAA, issued a report caused a fury of panic when they predicted that mammoth superstorms in the future could wipe out most of California. The NOAA scientists said that it's a plausible scenario and would be driven by an atmospheric river moving water at the same rate as 50 Mississippi rivers flowing into the Gulf of Mexico. Magnetic field may dip, flip, and disappear. The Economist wrote a detailed article about the magnetic field and what's happening to it. In the article, they noted there is, however, a growing body of evidence that the Earth's magnetic field is about to disappear, at least for a while. The geological records show that it flips from time to time, with the South Pole becoming the North and vice versa. On the average, such reversals take place every 500,000 years, but there is no discernible pattern. Flips have happened as close together as 50,000 years, though the last one was 780,000 years ago. But as discussed at the Greenland Space Science Symposium held in uh, Kalasak this week, the signs are that another flip is coming soon. Discussing the magnetic polar shift and the impact on weather, the scholarly paper Weather and Earth's Magnetic Field was published in the Journal of Nature. Scientists, too, are very concerned about the increasing danger of superstorms and the impact on humanity. Superstorms will not only damage agriculture across the planet, leading to phantoms and mass starvation, they will also change coastlines, destroy cities, and create tens of millions of homeless. Superstorms storms can also cause certain societies, cultures, and whole countries to collapse. Others may go to war with each other. A Danish study published in the scientific journal of geology found strong correlations between climate change and weather patterns in the magnetic field. It says the Earth's climate has been significantly affected by the planet's magnetic field according to a Danish study published Monday that could challenge the notion that human emissions are responsible for global warming. See? We're not causing it. Because this is happening. Remember, there's a big ball out there, it's called a sun, and it causes this stuff. It causes climate change. Don't let them sit there and, and screw with their, the charts and make the hockey stick out of it. No, there's points back, oh, in the 1800s, they, they used to grow grow grapes up as far north as Scotland and stuff. It's in, I mean, all the way up north, they were growing them out in the open by orchards-like of them. 
Our research shows a strong correlation between the strength of the Earth's magnetic field and the amount of precipitation in the tropics. One of the two Danish geophysicists behind the study, Mads uh, Fruschko uh, Knudsen, I can't pronounce his middle name, but I know his last name, of the geology department at Aarhus University in western Denmark, told the Vendenskab Journal. He and his colleague, Peter Rezager, of the Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland's GEEUS compared the reconstruction of the prehistoric magnetic field 5,000 years ago based on data from the stalagmites and stalactites found in China and Oman. In the scientific paper Monday, mag magnetopause shifts Earth's of geosynchronous orbit during geomagnetic superstorms with the distance equal to 300, negative 300 NT. The magnetic intensity of solar storms impacting Earth can intensify the effects of the polar shift and also speed up the frequency of emerging superstorms. Pole reversals may be initiating a new ice age. Remember, I've said that we're going to an ice age after this solar cycle. According to some geologists, a mini one. According to some geologists and scientists, we have left the last interglacial period behind us. Those periods are lengths of time, about 11,500 years, about due for one now, between major ice ages. One of the most stunning signs of the approaching ice age is what's happened to the world's processional wobble. The Earth's wobble has stopped. As explained in the Geology and Space Science website, EarthChangeMedia.com, the Chandler Wobble was first discovered back in 1891 by Seth Carlo Chandler, an American astronomer. The effects causes the Earth's pose to move in an irregular cycle of 3 to 15 meters in diameter and in oscillation. The Earth's wobble has a seven-year cycle which produces two extremes, a small spiraling wobble circle and a large spiraling wobble circle about 3.5 years apart. For conclusion of this article, visit Helium. And here are all the links for this article, article right here. And I'll have these at the bottom of the video in the show more. And you'll be able to go to these links and be able to check it out for yourself. Uh, related articles, let me get down here. Related articles added February 08, 2011. Yellowstone Supervolcano, New Ice Age, Could Topple U.S. Government. Terrence Ames, SalemNews.com. Find this interesting? Here is the link to Terrence Ames' brand new article, published February 4th. Uh, 2011, Egypt 2011, preview of American in 2015, Terrence Ames, SalemNews.com, this tells you all about him and his work, I'll have that on the, in the show more underneath the video too. Until next time, this is Spellbinder saying, hey, we're in this, <laughs> we're in cycle 24 and it seems to be a major cycle, they're already saying, not if, but when we'll be hit by a mega flare. This is not good to hear scientists coming out and saying not if, but when. So until next time, this is Spellbinder saying be good, be good at it, and get prepared. Be prepared. Get your food, get your grab bag, get whatever you saw on TV when they're showing people floating up in the air and tossing around because they're trying to warn you in a subtle way where you think they've been building the dumbs everywhere, deep underground military bases or underground cities for their elitist friends. Remember in South America they found a cave when they went in there it was actually carved out hallways and rooms perfectly carved could hold several thousand people think about that this has happened before and it's getting ready to happen again good day